Oh, <laughs> hey, there we are. Hey, welcome That's everybody uh, to another Epic Little Minis. Uh, I'm Rick. I'm Dave. Whew, had to get through that real quick. <laughs> um, just to let you guys know, we appreciate all, everybody that watched the pre-recorded episode that aired at 12.30. Today, uh, yep. featuring Star Wars Legion, which we are going to continue to paint. We are. It's yeah. as if we never stopped. I know. Maybe we took a short break. It's a never-ending thing. We had some lunch. Yeah. That sort of thing. It's crazy. Yeah. It's very cool, though. Oh, yeah. It's the best. Happy. They had some really good questions in the... Uh, during, during the pre-record thing. Oh, in the, uh, in the not live chat? The not live chat. Okay. Yes. But it was live chat, just not live video. Okay, right here. Uh, That's cool. One of them was uh, the size difference between the s miniatures from Star Wars Legion and the right. miniatures from like Imperial Assault. Right. So I'm going to show you guys that difference here in the rotator. Well, we have a stormtrooper from this is a Legion trooper, and the one that's white and the gray one is from Imperial Assault. So you can see that there is a difference. It's, it, it, it almost looks like the one that's Got uh, the primer and stuff on it and painted a little bit. He's taller. Is eaten better. Is eaten better, yes. He's a little thicker. He's like, you know. Fuller. I like it's like fuller. The, yeah, yeah. Fuller, a fuller looking miniature. Yep. So. And uh, that guy is about uh, 38 millimeters mm -hmm. from the bottom of the base to the top of his helmet. Nice. So. And the base is about uh, three, three and a half millimeters. Okay. So I know a few people were asking. Yeah. Uh, Sean was one of those. So that's the uh, <clears throat> the quick and dirty answer. Yep. And here are a couple of other comparisons. All right. We, we also have the Vaders. Yep. All right. So this first Vader here is from Legion. Legion, and then the shorter. Invasion is Imperial Assault. Yeah, it's Imperial Assault. And that guy, it's kind of funny. It's like when you see two cosplayers. Right, yeah. Someone that, 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 that is tall and imposing like Vader should be next to... Somebody who's not so much. Yeah, someone not so much. A very much shorter, less imposing Vader. But it looks like he might actually have more skill with that saber. A little more ability about... Uh, maybe. You know? Yep. And then finally... Yep. There's always a finally with you. Yes. <laughs> My favorite Skywalker. Jar Jar Skywalker. Jar Jar Skywalker. <laughs> <coughs> there you go. So I think it, it's probably, a, it seems a little bit more obvious with this one. Oh, yeah. That is... Young Luke and uh, slightly older Luke. Yeah, Commander Skywalker. Commander Skywalker. So... Looks good. Yep. So that gives you a, an indication. Yeah. Very cool. And is it this Thursday or next Thursday, uh, Jeff? Next Thursday, next Jeff Jenkins will be coming okay. in uh, and will be showing us how to do some object source lighting. Cool. So Jeff will be working on Vader. I'm going to work on uh, Luke. Okay. And you are going to set Luke. Okay. And you are going to sit and heckle us from the side, I think. Is that That's a fact. That's a fact. We're yeah. going to be prepped for heckling. Nice. Yeah, well, uh, what I'll do is while, while you guys are live, yep. I will be sharing. Oh, and, sharing. And, and commenting in the, in the chat and everything. Uh, yep. Throwing us questions from the, from the chat crowd. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Sounds well, good. I might just be sitting right over there. Heckling. He's going to be, <coughs> he's going to be sitting on the couch. Excuse me uh, for the cough there, everybody. <laughs> so... We'll be all prepped for that. So that should be good. That's uh, Thursday of next week, which will be the 22nd. Yes. Thursday of this week, the 15th, we have a pre-recorded uh, episode to kick off with, which is myself and uh, Drew Carrington. Yep, from One Inch Heroes. From One Inch Heroes, mm -hmm. starting on the Stormtroopers. And then we'll have our live episode. Working on Stormtroopers. So do you think we'll do the same thing? We'll kick off the pre-record at 12.30? Yeah, uh, because it gives us a, about a half hour between then this going live so we can just, uh, get everything set up and, cool. uh, you know. Get me mic'd up so that it kind of works. Yeah, yeah. And also... And then I can mumble. It, it, uh, do all the sound checks that we have to do, you know. Yep. And allows uh, Leona and uh, Johnny to go get lunch. Right, nice. <laughs> so... Nice. Now, as far as the idea. paints that I was using, I think you actually have them. I do. Ha-ha. 
So we have uh, beige brown. Yes. Was what you were working on for the pants? Have you done all the pants? Uh, if you have. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, you've done all the pants. Okay. Yeah. Well, the next step is uh, desert yellow from uh, the Vallejo Flames uh, of Water Color range. So Vallejo uh, do a lot of a lot of work with different uh, model companies. Okay. Uh, and so one of the things is Flames of War did a, a range of paints mm -hmm. with them. Uh, so their original set of paints uh, was basically branded Flames of War, but they're all from the Vallejo range. Okay. And the number on there, so this one is... 977? 977, which matches up with the desert yellow color in the model color okay. range, I think. Yeah. Okay. So... And this is going to be for their jackets? Uh, this is for their jackets. So okay. they've got the... Uh, basically and with yours, they're... Um, the, the backpacks and the gloves and the helmet rim and the gaiters are already already done. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this one you're just going to be mixing with uh, the charred brown. Uh -huh. to, to darken this a little bit? Yep. Okay. So basically a 50-50 mix of okay. the charred brown and uh, the desert yellow. And then uh, you'll be going on to uh, pretty much a straight desert yellow for the jackets. So we'll go mix first, then the yellow by itself to bring it to highlight yep. it out. Hi basically highlighting up in okay. stages here. Okay. So the first time you paint the the mix on, you will leave some of the the charred brown that's already on the model okay. in the shadows, so in the folds. Okay. That sort of thing. Um, and then yeah, this is just adding that first highlight. Okay. The the, the layering stage. Okay. First layering. All right, so I got that. You got that. All right, I will steal some of your, uh, well, some of my charred brown back. Yeah. I'm going to have to get a uh, hmm? set of the charred brown. Oh, move the box. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. We forgot to move the box earlier. Sorry about that. Here we go, and you can see uh, Rick's new tub O paints. Yeah. I just, that, that, that big thing was, like, taking up so much space and... I left a bunch home because I've been working on another uh, games miniatures. Okay, at right home. Up. So cool. good to see you doing more painting. I, well, this is from a game I was really excited to get a Kickstarter right. that I backed. Oh, cool! Um, by Druid City Games. Excellent. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so my next stage is going through with charred brown and painting all of the gaiters, the gloves, and the. Uh, the backpacks okay. and the helmet rims. So, uh, probably won't go through and do it on all of the models today. Mm -hmm. Just because there's a few other things that I'd like to sort of show us tackle. Okay. Which should be fine. So, what did you get into this weekend? Uh, this weekend, um, not a lot actually. I will admit, as I was telling you earlier, I got a little bit of a bit of a cold, and I think it was from you. Nah. I'm going to blame you completely. <laughs> <laughs> so there was sniffling, there was coughing. <clears throat> what? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try and not do that to make sure I don't burst Johnny's eardrums. <laughs> Dang it. No worries. But, uh, yeah, I did some painting. Surprise, surprise. Right. Uh, last Friday, uh, I was able to ship out a um, project that I've been working on uh, that I can't talk about just yet. Okay. Uh, well, I can talk a little bit about it, but I can't say exactly what it is yet, but we'll show some photos and maybe do a follow-up video uh, a little bit later on in the, the Star Wars process. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it was a gaming table. Well, sort of a display table, really, that I'd built. Okay. Uh, and it was nice to um, have that all crated up. And it was nice to um, have that all crated up and finally sort of ship out on Friday. Nice. Regain the space underneath my dining room table. My wife was very happy. Wait, you were storing it under the dining room table? Yep. I have it in a small uh, row home in okay. Baltimore City, so. Okay. You gotta find space where you can. I agree. So that was nice. Uh, and I painted up some uh, <coughs> Necromunda miniatures. Oh, nice. So that was cool. 
and I assembled the speeder bikes for uh, for this for this oh, for Legion. Yeah, uh, which was cool. I got the uh, sand glued to the base. I. Uh, That's where the pegged, the blue pegged flags were. Yep. Okay. Yep. So basically, I'm going to take a few more photos. So I still have to send those to Johnny, so we can squeeze those into uh, Thursday's show. Okay. When we talk about basing. Nice. Um, <clears throat> different basing ideas and that sort of thing, or different processes as well. Okay. Very cool. What did you guys do out there in uh, Game Land this past weekend that uh, you'd care to share with everybody in the chat? If you painted anything, did you go see any movies? Any movies? Oh. I actually went and saw a movie on Friday. Oh, cool. What did you see? I went and saw The Greatest Showman. Oh, okay. With yep. uh, Hugh Jackman and Zac Efron and Zan Zendaya. Zendaya. Um, what did you think? Uh, I thought it was freaking amazing. You're right. I like musicals, though. Yeah. Oddly. You know, I like like Pitch Perfect. Right. I love Pitch Perfect. Uh, not the third one, though. The third one was... Not so perfect. Not so perfect. It's okay. a little disappointing. But um, I will say this, man. Watching the soundtrack to that was amazing. Uh, the characters that were all portrayed were just phenomenal. As far as, like, um, like the bearded woman. The actress that yeah. played the bearded woman was, like... I don't know. Really she good. was inspirational. She was very cool. Yeah, I mean, her voice. Oh my god. Yep. Yeah. I saw it uh, a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> on my wife's birthday. Nice. Amusingly enough, I'm not a fan of musicals. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you like Grease? Uh, 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 I mean, Olivia Newton-John. I know. Australian. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me tell me some other things about my culture. <laughs> uh, drop bears. Real. Drop bears. What are, what are they? Deal. What are they? <laughs> Real deals. <laughs> they get you. <laughs> Crocodile Dundee. Excellent. Let me see. What else can I tell you about your culture? I don't know. <laughs> I think that's about it. No. You've hit your limit. Oh, for today. Okay. Oh, no, 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 just in general. In general, <laughs> in life. I'm suggesting is that they're like the three things. Oh. <laughs> that you know. <laughs> that you know. Yeah, the three things I know. <laughs> Vegemite, uh, Fosters. Okay, there we go. Here are some more things. <laughs> uh, dart frogs. You guys have a lot of poisonous dart frogs in Australia. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> really? There's a lot of poisonous animals. Poisonous frogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, show me an animal that isn't poisonous in Australia. So funny, funny story about. I know that there's a lot of them in Australia. It's not because of like Discovery Channel or Animal Planet. It's because of Trevor Price's Netflix original, Kulapari, an Army of Frogs, the animated show. I have not not heard of that. It is awesome. It was yeah. based on a, some young, young, uh, like young adult books that he wrote after he uh, retired from NFL. Okay. And they became comic books and the graphic novel, and yeah. it got picked up by Netflix as a Netflix original series. Right. And, wow. Uh, um, uh, shoot. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the voice actors that you would recognize on the show, but. <clears throat> The only one I can think of is that Mark Hamill dude. <laughs> I was wondering what the tenuous connection was. Yeah. And there it is. Yeah, some Mark Hamill guy uh, does a voice of, like, the old wise frog. Right. But if you can imagine a bunch of dart frogs that know martial arts and have superpowers, <laughs> okay. they got the show. Right. It's pretty cool. But they don't have an Australian accents? Oh, God, no. Jeez. That would be silly. <laughs> Why would they do that? Heaven forbid. <laughs> but it's really good. I, I enjoyed it. Cool. And uh, it's funny, as I watched the show, I kept seeing Trevor Price's name pop up. 
yep. you know, as a creator, written by, and all that stuff. You're right. I'm like, man, who is this guy, Trevor Price? And uh, so I, you know, Googled him, and it's like, oh, he played for the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. And uh, retired and, and uh, wrote a comic and wrote these novels, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I wonder where he lives now. So I tweeted him. Yeah. I was like, hey, Trevor, <laughs> where, where are you at now these days? Uh, I would love to have you come up to our studio in, in uh, Timonium, Maryland. And he goes, I'm in Baltimore. He, re he replied to me. There you go. I was like, would you like to come up? And he's like, sure. Retweeted, you know, tweeted back. One word, sure. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, this was like on a Friday afternoon. And then on the next Wednesday, we had him in the studio here interviewing him. Oh, cool. For uh, what we call the wow factor, where we, we've interviewed uh, uh, industry professionals and stuff like right. that. Right. It's pretty cool. That's very cool. Yeah. And he has a lot of, like, interest in, um, like, Australian mythology. Right. Yep. And uh, you will see a lot of that in this series. Okay. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, because he was like, Disney's got everything else. Everybody, right. nobody, <laughs> nobody cares about Australian mythologies. Yeah, <laughs> so. this is true. <laughs> There's so much, so much, uh, so much there. Well, the whole Aboriginal mythos, you know, as far mm -hmm. as like their beliefs religiously and everything, I, I think is kind of what he pulled from. Yeah, definitely. So... There's a lot of it. There's 40,000 years of it. So. That can't be right. No. <laughs> 40,000 years. Good yep. Lord. I know. I know. Where's that completed one? I can Perfect check it out. Rick. <laughs> Nobody saw that, right? Not at all. <clears throat> on nobody, a side note, I pulled... Nobody saw it because nobody's watching. On a side note, sorry. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. That was coming from uh, Carl in the chat. Carl says, on a side note, uh, he pulled an old issue of White Dwarf I got at a con off the shelf to read in the porcelain library. Yep. There was a Dave Taylor painted army in there. Was that this Dave Taylor? Yep. It was this Dave Taylor. Yep. Which army was it? Uh, I don't know. Carl, what army was it that you uh, you found in there in the White Dwarf? While on the on <laughs> While the, throne. On the loo, the throne. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then Jacob says, "Got some uh, Gene Steelers assembled for my ongoing Toy Story project, and played a demon witch hunter in Rifts using a mini I had made by Hero Forge. Very cool. Excellent. <clears throat> I'd love to see a picture of your demon witch hunter." That'd be cool. Definitely. Yeah. Have you had any uh, miniatures made by Dr uh, Hero Forge? I have. Cool. I had a bunch of um, space-faring looking creatures, I, I like um, anapomorphic uh, creatures. Okay. Um, a wolf, kind of like a soldier, a, cool. uh, a buffalo, uh, like heavy gunner, okay. Uh, yep. A deer sniper and a cat assassin. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. But um, I was going to use them for Starfinder. Cool. Yeah. And they were all things that were sort of available to pick. Yeah, you just no. you know I went through different body types, different head types, right. and, and weapons, and just you know you, you kind of put together what you want to match want. Them together. That's yeah. cool. I didn't realize I had that, like, so much variety. It's crazy. My, my thing with Hero Forge, I, I think they're a great company, have a, a, a lot of potential. I yep. uh, would just hope that they could bring their price point down a little bit on their miniatures. Right. Because I think it was almost $30 a miniature. But uh, they are custom, so, that, I mean, that's, yep. that's the price you're paying for is a custom miniature. Exactly. There are certainly other companies around that are mm -hmm. charging that much. Yeah, for non-custom miniatures. So. Yep. Yep. We don't talk about those companies. <laughs> well, actually, we do. <laughs> do we? Dang it. <laughs> but that's fine. <clears throat> I 
Yeah. Once right. we get all these painted up, it's going to be exciting to be able to uh, send these out to a, one of our viewers. It would be very cool. Definitely. Yeah. We've got, uh, we've got a little bit of time to get them finished, right? Yeah, we got some time. Right. Uh, the 21st. 21st of March. March. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Carl says, I don't recall which army, sorry, but I will cher I will now cherish, cherish that magazine. <laughs> Fantastic. You want to remove it from the... Uh, remove it from the loo? <laughs> from the loo. <laughs> from the laboratory. Uh, that's freaking hilarious. What's that? That he'll cherish, cherish his toilet, toilet read. Toilet read. <laughs> Is he going to bring it in to have it autographed by Dave? Yes. Do that. That sounds silly. What? Come on. Silly. <laughs> no, that's cool. <clears throat> there are a lot of. Uh, I was really lucky. I was able to get quite a lot of my armies published in White Dwarf. Well, an advantage of working on White Dwarf while you're painting lots of armies. Right. <laughs> Uh, Mini Painting Studio says, had minis made of my two friends for each of their 40K armories that look like them, made myself one as well for my Zinch army, where I'm wearing Egyptian stuff and holding two spray paint cans. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. And yes, the $30 price point is the, qual uh, is the quality you want for painting. Right. Uh, Carl says, Nebraska to Maryland is quite a drive for an autograph, but you guys might be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, James. James has arrived. Hooray. Uh, I hope you're having a good day today, James, even though you, we you know you had to attend a service today. Um, yeah. In light of that, hopefully you're having a great day. The uh, Nebraska to here isn't that bad. Come on. But Are what, you going to Gen Con? Yeah, I was, I was about <laughs> to say that. <laughs> It's like I can read your, read your mind. Go to Gen Con. It's kind of frightening. Yes. Your mind, that is. But this is true. Yeah. Gen Con. Have we continued that conversation anymore? Have you spoken to, uh, to anybody? I was going to actually speak to some people this weekend, or and at Gamma. All right, cool. In regards yeah. to that. Excellent. Yeah. That's referring to the idea that we do a uh, sort of game trade media event event at yeah. Gen Con, like a meetup. Yeah. Which would be a lot of fun. So folks who watch us here for painting happy little minis, and people who watch you for building character, building character or yeah, just almost the same people. Board games and beyond. Yes, that show. That show. That other show. <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be interesting that these next couple months we're going to have some pretty interesting uh, guests in. I want to say, I have to check the calendar, but um, it may be next Wednesday or the following Wednesday. Uh, Paul Butler and some of his staff are going to be coming into the studio. Cool. To do a demo of this game. Star Wars Legion? Star Wars Legion. Yep. Super cool. Yeah. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, kind of show how they demo it in their store. Give everybody some, you know, um, intel on the gameplay. We'll talk about, you know, building your, your, your squads and your forces for your games. Like, you know, how to you know, choose what for what. How many rebel troopers do you need to take into the field to take out an ATST? Right. <laughs> I think it's all of them. I would say all <laughs> pretty of them. much. <laughs> or two Ewoks. Yeah. 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 Who have enormous logs and right axes, stone axes. Yeah. I'm going to reach over and steal one of your Let's dudes. Do Let's do your alien guy. And I'm going to mess around with uh, some flesh on the alien. 
Okay. So I think in the uh, in the booklet, he is painted up with a kind of a blue gray. Okay. Kind of uh, for his skin tone. Skin tone. So we're gonna go with that. And I'm gonna start by uh, mixing a base here with uh, a dark blue. This is a uh, imperial blue from the. Uh, Vallejo game color range, and some basalt gray. Bath salt. Basalt. <laughs> basalt. Basalt. Bath. Not bath salts. Bath salts. <laughs> yes, it's not from Florida. Nice. <clears throat> Taking the pop culture news reference way back. I am. I am. <laughs> Nebraska. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, James says he's with his family today. I might make it to ReaperCon this year, especially after the huge care package they sent. Yeah, you might want to, if they sent you a huge care package, uh, <laughs> Josh, you might want to go down there and be like, oh, hey, guys, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's a, that's a show I wouldn't mind attending once, at least once. ReaperCon? Yeah. Yep. This year it is on... Uh, the same weekend as Nova Open and Dragon Con. Nova Open is in Virginia? Uh, Nova Open is Virginia. Yeah. Dragon Con Atlanta. And yeah, I don't think I'm going to go to Dragon Con this year. Yeah? Uh, I oh, want goodness. I, you know, the reason is because I kind of want to hit Nova Con. Okay. Nova Open. That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Nova That's what Open. I heard. Yeah. The Nova Open. Because... <laughs> uh, you know, I like Dragon Con because I get to see a bunch of my friends that do cosplay. Right. And all that stuff. And it is a, you know, it is a drunk fest and all that stuff, which is kind of fun to watch people get all loopy up on their drink. Right. But the gaming scene at Dragon Con has, it's waned pretty heavily. Okay. Um, they have a great gaming room. You know, they have a great game library yeah. and everything. But... It, it's not what it used to be. Right. When, you okay. know, the Dragon Con started off as a gaming convention. Oh, right. And right. has since switched gears to more of a entertainment and cosplay right. event. Which, again, is nothing wrong with that Absolutely at all. Absolutely fine. But if I go to a show, I'd rather go and be able to actually play some games. Yep. That's cool. Well, you'll definitely be able to play a lot of games at Nova. Um, okay, I'm just going to jump in here. On, uh, so on the cam, we can see. Uh, a little bit closer. Oh, check that out. We've gone away, gone away from the autofocus. Oh, check that out. Okay, so that that's cool. Good. Nice. So that's a great base color there. What I'm going to use is a little bit of uh, light gray and mix that into my original paint color, which was pretty much a 50-50 mid-gray. Oh, mid okay. So now I can just come on and uh, his eyebrows, his, where I guess his sort of nose is. It's a great thing about aliens. You can't be 100% sure. <laughs> Let's see on the top of the head, there we go. The eyes, the eyebrows, chin. What are people saying in the chat? Uh, Josh says, I have friends in Denton, so it's uneasy to stay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Reapercons, I believe, in uh, uh, Texas, yes? Yep. Denton. Yeah. I think it's like right near Denton, Texas. Okay. And then Carl says, I have family in Mansfield, a bit of a drive, but my brother in law is a mini painter, war gamer, so it's an easy sell to get him to go. Love the Reapercon I went to in 2016. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that would be one to hit up. I've yep. painted some Reaper stuff because um, they sent me a little care package last year in the beginning of the year when I first was, like, starting this whole thing. Yep. And uh, I had a lot of fun painting. Uh, they have, like, this worm creature. <clears throat> okay. The Great Mother is what they called it. Right. And uh, that was a lot of fun to paint. And I feel like if I were to paint, be painting it now... Yeah. 
it would look even better. <laughs> right. <laughs> cool. But, but I wasn't upset with what I what I did do with the miniature, so. That's good. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of great, uh, great painters at that show. I mean, there are always a lot of great painters, mm -hmm. but uh, there are some that I actually know this time. Oh. No. <laughs> So there'll be folks like uh, James Wapple and uh, Kathy Wapple and Aaron Lovejoy. Oh, you'll be there, along with a lot of the sort of the regular Reapercon crew. Okay. Definitely neat. I backed their most recent uh, Kickstarter. Oh, the Reaper Bones? Mm hmm So I'm hoping that? to get that, you know. Do we we talked year. about that before, didn't we? Did we, we work did. out whether it was three or four? It's the fourth. The fourth? Mm hmm Amazing. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm actually excited, uh, you know, Toy Fairs this weekend. And oh, cool. We're going up there to New York and uh, check out a bunch of the toy companies and a bunch of gaming companies will be there as well. So we'll talk to them. Excellent. Uh, hopefully we'll get some good footage, uh, show off some new toys coming out. I know Koto Bikia, who makes a lot of Star Wars toys, they do like the um, the reimagined, where they look like they're all uh, oh, samurais and oh, stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. And, um, Those are awesome. I'm excited to see what might be like some of the new wave stuff coming out for 2018 from them and from Hasbro. Yeah. Uh, in regards to the you know the new you know, solo, maybe we'll have some sneak peeks at some solo product. There we go. How's that guy look? <clears throat> we good with him? Looks good. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna pop him down the front there and. You wanna put him on the rotator? Oh, sure. Let's do that. Okay, and I'll get, uh, I'll get the painting on yours. How's it looking there? Yeah, he looks yep. good. Cool. So, I sort of painted that up so I could let the uh, charred brown dry uh, and get ready for the the next stage on, on mine that are using the white prime, which is the... Uh, just a reminder for those who didn't see the uh, the show earlier, is uh, basically a wash, which is a mix of charred brown and Agrax Earthshade from uh, Games Workshop. Okay. Um, we'll just be thinning that down and running it over the sort of the entire model. But while, well, before I start doing that, I'll finish off this one. Plume has joined us. Hey, Plume. Hopefully everybody is doing well. Uh, just as a reminder, too, if you're watching us and you enjoy what we're doing here and you feel like other people might enjoy it, please share. We do appreciate that. Um, there is a contest going on right now. If you look at our Facebook page or if you're in the Painting Happy Little Minis group, you can see the contest page there, uh, link where you can go there and do all the different entries uh, and become the big winner. Yep, potentially and, win. And potentially win the entire first wave of Star Wars Legion, painted by Dave and I and other guests that yep. are going to be coming in and helping, and sure also some terrain cool. pieces that uh, they're going to be building, which is pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> the whole shebang. Yeah, that's going to be great. And uh, our, our mothership, Diamond Comic Distributors, and uh, um, an alliance and all associated sister and the big family of companies that fall under Diamond Comic Distributors. Uh, just so you guys know, keep your ears and eyes open for next Wednesday, <clears throat> the 21st. Ooh. Because uh, there will be another contest being announced, and you will not want to miss it. Okay. It's huge. Right. So. I was about to jump in and start to speculate on what the prize would be, but... I thought maybe that's not a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I've actually kind of, on my personal Facebook page over the last like month and a half, dropped hints or asked questions <clears throat> as to you know what would people do if they had an opportunity to come and meet you. Well, of course. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was wondering why you sort of should took a picture of your basement and said, "Who'd like to stay here?" Oh God! If I did that, <laughs> the only people I'd get would be the people that are trying to go from one hoarding situation to another. Right. <laughs> Excellent. To, f to not feel so bad about their hoarding? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Stacks of board games. My RPG shelf. Right. Which is literally a wall. Right. Which is literally a wall. <laughs> yep. That is cool. 
And speaking of which, where are we at? What's our time? We've got about a half hour left. Okay. Cool. So I am going to share it because I haven't shared it yet. Oh, you haven't? No. You're terrible. <laughs> I wanted to paint and talk. Yep. And uh, I got all of the... Um, I got the first layer done? First layer done. Excellent. So I'm going to share this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> totally my fault. Uh, there we go. Okay, so let's see how he matches up with the first one. Can you grab the, the rotator? Cool. Okay, so, yep, pretty similar there. Even though we've got a base coat, uh, base coat of black on one and a base coat of, or oh, a prime coat of black. And so, yeah, so that skin's working pretty well. I'm going to hand this guy back to Rick. There you go. All right, thank you. And now I'll go through and uh, wash on uh, three of these guys. So we'll save him for last. So I'll start with the uh, the Ion Trooper here. Oops. And some of the the charred brown. Some of the Agrax Earthshade. Just mix that together. Basically, the the charred brown adds in some ad additional pigment okay. to it. Uh, so it'll leave a bit more on the uh, on the paint rather than uh, sort of being too thin and uh, having a lot of that um, like the desert yellow shine through really brightly. Right. We don't want it too bright because it's, uh, it's supposed to be camouflage. Well, not camouflage, but blending. It's in blending, it. yeah. So, I'm start to run this over the top. Now, now I definitely uh, suggest that you do experiment with, uh, with your models, experiment with your washes, uh, so that you get comfortable with sort of uh, how much you're gonna need to get the look that you're after. And you said after I do this initial coat for the um, jackets, goes just desert yellow for yep. the highlights? Yep. Okay. I think we'll go straight to, to desert yellow. You might want to, it's one of those things, you, you might want to go uh, with, a, with a mix. Actually, Johnny, if you can switch to, um, to Rick's cam. There we go. So you can see at the moment the um, the greys that are in the um, charred brown yeah. uh, have really knocked the, the yellow mm -hmm. out of the desert yellow. Um, but because you're going to be continue sort of working through it, mm -hmm. that yellow will come back into it. Okay. It uh, really depends if you want to have a brighter yellow, if you want to have a really solid yellow. That, like instead um, maybe do a 50-25? A well, 75-25. Yeah. 142? I don't know. Down as, long as, it, hut. as long as it adds up to so, 100, my friend. <laughs> I haven't played football. But anyway, uh, yeah. So I think a 75, 25 should be good. Um, I, the other thing that really can help you with that decision is how long you want to spend painting. Right. Yeah. If you don't want to spend a lot of time painting, just one more highlight stage would be fine. Can I uh, get the charred brown from you? Yeah, sir? sure. There we go. You. If you want to uh, take your time and uh, get a sort of the result, then doing another highlight is going to be better. Okay. And I'm all about, you know, trying to be better. Trying to be better? Yeah. That's cool. I'm fine with that. Mix it up. Yep. It's funny as I, oh. I, I picked up uh, these little, like, uh, they look like film canisters. Yeah. But um, at five and below. Okay. It has like a little package. It had a bunch of different little, like, clear uh, topped yep. bottles things. Sure. Uh, just for this purpose. Like, if I, like you were saying, is in, until I get some empty, you know, fully empty ones, I can, t I can take the labels off and be like, this is my, you know, 50-50 beige and, and desert yellow, then I can have, and desert yellow, then I can have my 75-25 mix. mix, and then, you yep. know, 
<clears throat> yeah, it's definitely good if you're, uh, if you're doing something that has a lot of mixes um, or you have one mix that you're gonna be using across a lot of models. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely making, making a mix and putting it in its own separate bottle will be incredibly helpful. Even at this level, it should be a little bit drier and, you know, what are mm. your thoughts? What do you mean, drier? Like just... Are you, oh, you're dry brushing it on? Yeah. Yeah, if, you, if you're doing a dry brush at this stage, yeah, you want it to be fairly uh, light because you don't want it to go over onto the other colors. Right. Personally, I'd be... Uh, just doing a, a layering highlight. A layering, yeah. layering highlight. Yeah, layering highlight. But of course, with these guys, it's all about the washes. Or using one wash to sort of tie everything together. Okay. Okay, so we've got three more guys here that are all. Uh, one that have their wash on them. Oh, that was close. Always be careful with your wash jars. <laughs> they knock those over. <laughs> they will make a mess. They will. I've seen some fantastic uh, things that people have done with uh, sort of laser cut MDF or um, 3D printing mm -hmm. to create things that, mm -hmm. to create things that, to basically hold the, hold the pot All right. and hold the lid open as well. Okay. But they, have a, but they have a large base like this, so it's almost <laughs> impossible to knock it over. <laughs> you're going to have to drop it when you're putting it in or taking it out. It's the only way to make a mess with it. So that's nice and impressive. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Walter's wondering if uh, you ever clear coat, coat your minis, or if I do. I, I've never done it. Um, I do occasionally. Uh, depends on the, what the material is that the miniature is made from. Mm -hmm. um, t what I typically find is... Uh, <laughs> You don't get anywhere near as much sort of rubbing or wear okay. on plastic miniatures once they're painted. Right. Um, so I generally don't do a varnish over my plastic miniatures. Okay. Uh, metal miniatures and resin miniatures are the ones that you're more likely to get wear and tear on. Okay. Um, or chipping of the, the paints and that sort of stuff. Why is that? Um, because they're harder. They're a harder okay. surface, so when it's rubbing it's something or knocking against something, it, okay. um, it's more likely to, to peel off. I think um, sometimes some of the uh, undercoats they use, like uh, spray can primers and that sort of thing, bond better to plastics okay. uh, than they do to metals and good? resins. Cool. Yep. It's coming along there. I think. Maybe if you added a little bit more desert yellow in, I think, into your mix. Or are you going to save that for just the, 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 highlight, yeah. this, the final highlight? Yeah. You're going to do desert yellow. Yeah. Okay, sure. I'm going to reach over and grab some desert yellow back. Uh, but yeah, so occasionally I use um, use some varnish, okay. uh, like a spray. Typically it's a spray varnish. Yeah. Uh, recently, when I finished the large um, commission, of uh, Legio Custodes right. models. I used uh, the new spray varnish from Games Workshop. Oh, okay. Uh, the Munitorium varnish. And that worked really well. Okay. It, uh, I think it's, it's described as like a satin varnish. So it's not gloss, it's not matte, it's in okay. the middle. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't... Um, and didn't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically, it, it, colors that weren't metallic ended up a little bit more matte than I was expecting. Okay. But at the same time, it didn't make the metallic colors matte. It didn't. Which is good. Knock, yeah, which yeah, is you great. You want to keep those metallics. You want to have that sort of reflection going. Yeah. So, um, 
So yeah, now I'm going to come back to uh, to this guy, the leader of the squad. He got the wash earlier today, okay. or last week. But he got the wash on the earlier show. Right. I don't know. Time travel is killing me. Yeah. Uh, so now I'll just go along and do the final highlights on his uh, his jacket. The desert yellow. It's funny. That's the same miniature I'm working on right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent. I mean, I don't know if that's actually funny, ha ha, humorous. <laughs> I'm I'm laughing on the. <laughs> How about that? I'll take it. But uh, another, I think another brand that uh, people like quite a bit is uh, Testa's Dull Coat. Really? Yep. Testers of all Testers. of all paint companies. Of to, all paint companies. To shout out to. Testers Dull Coat. Okay. So it usually comes in a smaller than sort of regular size spray can. Okay. But uh, yeah, works well. Gives a great protective coating. Uh, the Army Painter, uh, their anti matte <coughs> or anti shine matte varnish. Okay. Uh, provides a really it is a very strong matte varnish. Um, so I've used that on occasion. Okay. Uh, Keith says yeah. that he does one coat of matte varnish on my minis after I base coat and shade as a save point. Yep. Some people do that. Typically want to use a, uh, a varnish that there that is, is fairly thin. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't rec probably wouldn't recommend the, the Army Painter um, varnish for that. Yeah, it's pretty thick. Because it, it, yeah, it ends up pretty thick. Tested's Dull Coat, probably the same. It's been a while since I've used that. Okay. But uh, yeah, which one do you use, Keith? Yeah, that's a great question. If uh, Keith, it'd be cool if we could actually bring someone into this. We like. Great. Summon them? Yeah, summon them and they could talk. <laughs> kind of like uh, what Facebook Live does yep. for, uh, you know, I've seen like, uh, what's his name from Arrow? Um, what's his name? Stephen Amell has done it. Like right. He'll be on Facebook Live and yep. then he'll literally, someone in the chat, he'll select and go boop and it, their, their phone camera comes on and they're in the chat. They're like right okay. there with them. Right. Uh, and he'll ask them questions or they'll get all excited and cry. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty funny. Well, that, that's pretty much what would happen here. Oh, yeah. They'd like, without it. the excitement. Or the crying. No, they'd just be the crying. They'd be like, oh, oh I, I wanted to remain secret. I didn't want anybody to know I was watching this. <laughs> right. Painting happy little minis is my guilty pleasure. <laughs> well, not mine, but somebody else's. What would be but. funny is if I did it and it was like uh, Justin Zirin yeah. or someone from one of the different companies and we could pull them in, in and go, boop, hey, we got some questions for you. <laughs> I'm you sure know, they'd what, love that. What were you thinking when you did this or that or, you know, yeah. and actually like maybe do like an interview of some sort. Okay. That'd be kind of cool. Dang, I'm thinking, no, I'm I think until thinking we, about that. I think until we can do that, we just need to invite them along to the chat. And yeah, I mean, have them, yeah, have the typing fingers ready. I agree. These are my typing fingers. Your painting, your painting fingers. Yep, these, these two. Just those. Your 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 chicken pecker. Yep. I sure am. Dang it. Hang on. Yep. Oh, <laughs> you got me. <laughs> There we go. Get my baby around back. So how are they coming along? I think they're coming along pretty good. Cool. These are like possibly my best miniatures yet. Yeah. Excellent. Good job. And I, you know, I think the 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 it's miniature the, it's the quality of the sculpt, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't hurt that they that, that they're really good <laughs> sculpts. Yep. But also the teacher, you know, got a good teacher. Yeah, what was her name? Uh, what was her name? Bob Ross was his name. Ah, uh, right. That's what I channel. I try to channel Bob Ross. Let's go ahead right. and uh, take a look at 
couple of these. Put him up there I had well. a fantastic teacher in 11th and 12th grade, Mrs. Godsell. Yeah. She was our uh, English teacher. And we did all sorts of cool books, mm -hmm. novels that we had to read and that sort of thing. Lord of the Rings? Um, no, we didn't do Lord of the Rings, actually. Mm -hmm. We did, um, we did, uh, oh. I think they look all right. Yep. Coming along. Cool. We did Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. Okay. Uh, which is an amazing book, but it was the basis for Apocalypse Now, the movie Apocalypse Now, which we then also got to watch in class. Okay. Apocalypse Now? As like 16 year olds. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, definitely neat. Okay, so, what's the pants on this guy? Scott, see if any of these have tried. Scott Weasel says, and welcome, Scott. Uh, bearded rebel troop must be Captain Rex. It's a mortal, a moral imperative. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I can see Captain Rex. Who's Captain Rex? Really? Have I just? Uh, no, no, no. Have I just killed it no, for you? Not okay. at all. You uh, know me. Johnny, who do we got on backup? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, what, what? 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 Captain Rex and <laughs> um, uh, Captain Cody or Commander Cody were from the Star Wars. Clone Wars animated oh, okay. series, right? Yeah, uh, and then on they they made a reappearance on uh, the Clone Wars or Rebels, Star Wars Rebels, right? Okay, on Disney, right? Um, they were clones from that they were cloned from uh, Jango Fett, right? And the kind of when Order sixty six was dropped, right? Uh, fought it. Okay, uh, I remember the name Cody from, yeah, from one, Star Wars? Of the, uh, one of the prequels. Yeah, yes. Was that attacking the clones? It was attacking yes, the clones. Okay, right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, sorry about that. Oh, it's fine. Those are things. Please that Please let me continue to paint Star Wars. Of course. Is it okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those are just things that are like. A lot of people will watch the movies and stuff, but they they don't tend to watch the animated features as well. That's me. But I will. I'll I, say I this. resemble that remark. The the Star Wars Rebels, I love it. Yeah. Um, I like the whole uh, idea that the, this little group of uh, rebels are doing things in that are almost as just as important as blowing up Death Stars, you know? Right. Yep. And they actually are uh, referenced in Rogue One. Right. Which is kind of cool. And it's my favorite squad on Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. If okay. You know, the, <laughs> the Phoenix Squadron. Excellent. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't. I don't fault anybody if they haven't actually seen Clone, you know, Star Wars, uh, Clone Wars, or Rebels. Right. Thank you. Yeah, but I think they should watch it. I mean, <laughs> the reason I say that is because it, it it gaps <clears throat> some of the canon material, so you get the you got fillers right in those gaps that you would be like, oh snap, what do you mean Darth Maul made a reappearance? Because he did. Right. <laughs> spoiler. Is that a spoiler? No, I don't have to watch it now. It's all okay. It's super good. You should totally watch it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. And uh, who are some other ones? You know, when you first see Vader in Star Wars Rebels, yeah, it's kind of like Rogue One. Okay, where he's just like super powerful, and you can feel the dread. Yeah, that he just exudes. Right. So. Excellent. Okay, just got that going. Hmm. Let's bring what I should do next. I think these guys are almost dry. Yep. Yeah, uh, Keith says he uses Citadel's Purity Seal. Okay, right here. Um, and then Carl was like, who is Captain Rex? 
multiple question marks and exclamation points. Dave, no. <laughs> Sorry, Carl. And then uh, Walter says, off subject, have any of you seen the new Frost Giant King from Reaper? Nope. Is it good? I'm not. I'm <laughs> it is. I expect it is. Yeah. We've got about five minutes. Okay. So, we've got a little bit of work there to do then, I guess. Yeah. Finish these guys up. Um, but at least this is uh, so our first hour and the second hour of giving you an idea of sort of two different ways you can approach uh, painting your um, troopers. I think we'll throw the two finished ones up on the spinner. Okay. And that way you can have a look at them and sort of do your comparing and contrasting. Right. So you're, what you're seeing is, again, uh, one was primed white, one was primed black. And you can see the... Yep. the but the same color palette was used in regards to their uniforms. Uniforms, yeah. So the one with the white was given uh, sort of base colors, thin down base colors over the white prime, and then a, a wash, and then some highlights, uh, like a shading wash. And then uh, for the one primed black was the base color of charred brown over everything, and then everything was built up from that charred brown base color. Um, then all the de extra details were painted um, black and silver and yeah. that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, a couple of different ways to approach that. On Thursday, we'll be talking about stormtroopers, painting stormtroopers, so lots yep. of white and black there. Uh, this time we didn't try and make it difficult for you and prime one black and work up from there. Right, thank God. <laughs> so it would have just been too crazy. Uh, but we did bring Drew Carrington in from One Inch Heroes and... Uh, primarily because last year, November, no, uh, October, well, October it was Halloween. Yeah, October thirty first, we had the uh, the first speed painting challenge, mm -hmm. and Drew was saying that uh, painting white was his Achilles heel. Achilles heel. <laughs> so, just because he said that, if he hadn't said anything and just painted a white scar, we might not have brought him back in. But yeah, he uh, we just did that to be cruel. <laughs> True. <laughs> but he came we in. Like to uh, make painted, him suffer. Pardon. We like to make him suffer. Yeah, yeah, for sure, definitely. <laughs> That's what we're all about, making everybody suffer. Uh, yeah, so he has painted up uh, uh, two stormtroopers. I painted a couple of storm stormtroopers mm -hmm. alongside him. Uh, and we'll see those at 12.30 on s Thursday. Thursday, yeah. Thursday, get my days right. Uh, next week, uh, what are we going to do on Tuesday next week, do you think? Um... Well, my thought was, let's go big. Yeah? Let's uh, put together the ATST. Okay. And the airspeeder. Radio. And let's take a look at, you know. So we'll do like a build episode. Yeah, we'll put them together. Okay. And yep. uh, then we'll talk about our paint palette that we want to use on each one or whatever. Sure. No, that sounds good. And then Thursday next week. We've got the characters, which will be good. Uh, Vader and Luke. Yeah. And then the week after that... I think we come back and actually paint those big, big boys. Big boys, yeah. Yeah. And okay. Then, uh, We've got the smaller ones to do as well. And the speeder the bikes. ATST. TST. Yeah. Or RT. ATRT. ATRT. Yeah. Yep. And actually, yeah, that's one of the other things we'll do on Thursday. Thursday is talk about basing. Yeah. So that'll work. We'll get uh, get stuck into some basing and finish some of these models off, which would be pretty cool. Yeah, and then I think. Uh, Based on that, it's going to be putting us close to that crunch time into March. Yeah. And we're going to have to maybe paint some stuff off camera. <laughs> or I, <think>. I will. <laughs> I will paint some stuff off camera. Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll get it done. We'll be all good. Actually, it's going to be tough because we've still got another, we've got another seven Rebels to paint. Yeah. Troopers. Uh, on top of these. Then we've got the... Uh, some more speeder bikes. We probably should do one, all the one, speeder bikes at once. Yeah, we have four speeder bikes total. Yep. The two in the core and the two in the expansion. Yep. In the boat, um, bonus pack there. And then... Uh, oh, you know what we could do? I don't. We could mess around with a conversion for the uh, the rider of the ATRT. How so? Uh, I don't know. But, I mean, uh, he's a rebel. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to pull him. He's just sitting over the side here. Uh, so he looks like a rebel trooper, pretty much like 
any of these other rebel troopers. Right. And so maybe slicing them across here. On at the waist? At the waist. And slicing him at the waist. Okay. Do some little shuffling around. Could be, oh, yeah, let me get it right. There we go. So yeah, well the gear is similar, so. Hmm. Yeah, I think we should try that. Is this, is this a magnet thing? No, no. We okay. cut cut them both off. So basically, this is doing a conversion. Okay. So we cut them in half. We'd use like a, a very fine saw called a razor saw. Okay. Cut through there. Glue the two parts, the two new parts together. Right. And uh, yeah, have it all ready to go. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. That'll be great. Have it add a little bit of a variety to the force. Well, uh, I mean, when I say the variety to the force, I mean just so that these two aren't. Right. And that was forced with a, with a small F, not a capital F. Well, let's, can you, uh, Leona, could you grab the other ATRT box? Uh, it's, uh, yep. Uh, nope, one of the ones stacked up over there. Mm -hmm. it, Sorry. It'll have the it's going to look like uh, a two legged thing without a box around the top. There, there we go. go. Of course, it was on the bottom of the pile. Of course. So. That one looks like yeah. it already is different. It's got both hands on the. All right. On the handles. Well, how about that? Sorry. I'm taking all my conversion joy away. <laughs> You're terrible. The worst. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, open it up. Yeah, open it up. We do uh, love that you guys joined us today. <laughs> everybody in the chat, we appreciate all the questions and the comments and, and the uh, banter between everybody. Uh, make sure you, if you are not already a part of the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group that you join up or request to join. We'll add you in there. Uh, if you have questions about painting, if you want to watch some other live painting episodes from uh, Mini Painting Studio and uh, what's the other guy's, uh, the new one in there, Armor? Oh. Man. I sure. Can't. Ask me without yeah. giving me any prep time. Yeah, no prep time Sorry. on that. But there are others in there. Uh, Drew yep. at One Inch has also been putting some live uh, up. Uh, stuff in there. So you can check out other painters doing uh, amazing works, learn all the tips and tricks and everything. Yep. And uh, build, we're just building a great community around miniatures. Also, Star Wars Legion coming out in March, March 21st is the drop dead date, so. And just before we go, not only it, does he have both arms, uh, both hands on the uh, controls, yes. but he also, on his backpack, he has a, like a blaster rifle oh, across nice. the top of his backpack. Yeah. Super cool. Super cool. Thank you very much, Fantasy Flight, for already thinking of variety. Variety. It's the best. That is cool. <laughs> uh, but uh, make sure you, if you haven't already uh, entered the contest, at the top of uh, Game Trade yep. Media's page, pinned to the top, you, there's a link there. You can go to the Gleam campaign where you can do all the different entry points to potentially win all of the uh, Star Wars Legion by Fantasy Flight that we are painting here on the, on the show yep. up until March 21st. All of Wave 1. All of Wave 1. It's going to be pretty awesome. Yep. And finally, as we always say, go to your local game Thanks store, for. support your local community, uh, yep. buy local, uh, yeah. All that sort of all stuff. All that stuff. Yep. So Head to the store. Yeah. I'm Rick. I'm Dave. This has been Painting Happy Little Minis, and we'll see you at the game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.